Hi guys, good afternoon and welcome to this edition of Coffee with Pastor G. As I'm still just uh, radiating and um, very uh, full of gratitude and joy, uh, what a wonderful uh, time we had at the church here this last week. We had uh, our Friday night worship service, which was, uh, in my opinion, outstanding with Olivia and Toby and Marcella and Phil and Lana. What a beautiful time. Uh, we have uploaded that service, uh, just pure worship. It's close to an hour and 40 minutes, and we have uploaded that to YouTube. It's also on our Facebook page, and I just encourage you to uh, take time and just sit and uh, worship the Lord through that great time of worship. Uh, and then, of course, Sunday, what a wonderful time with our baptism that we try to do at least once a year. Sometimes we do it twice a year. But what an incredible time with our seven people who made their declaration openly, uh, publicly, their declaration to follow Jesus and uh, being obedient to Him and to what His Word tells us to do. Uh, so very proud of Naomi and Stella and Anna and Monica and Terry and Sam and Chris. Uh, congratulations, guys. We have your certificates that we have printed and signed, and we will be given to them, giving them to you this Sunday. And so great time of, of fellowship and uh, the worship again with our new PA system out there. And um, the food, uh, just thank you everyone who brought stuff. Uh, we ha always have a tremendous amount of food at our uh, fellowships and our baptisms. And so thank you to everyone who participated and who brought food. What a wonderful time. And so I just wanted to remind everyone that this week, uh, in fact tomorrow, uh, we're going to be resuming with our Getting to Know You getting to know all about you, as I'm going to be sitting down with no other than Toby Woldowski, uh, who is our worship leader here. He's been here uh, six or seven years, I believe, and just an incredible testimony and a story behind the piano uh, as he leads us in worship every Sunday and most Thursdays. So we're going to do that tomorrow, Wednesday, and hopefully have it up for you on YouTube by Wednesday night. Also, please remember to keep the men in prayer as we are going up to uh, the men's retreat this Friday, Saturday, coming home Sunday. Uh, the theme is going to be the life of Joseph and looking for a tremendous time up there as well. Pastor Mike from Bakersfield will be joining us and Isaac as well with some worship. We have uh, 17 men right now uh, signed up and um, I think 15 are confirmed, so looking forward to a great time. There's still room. I haven't done the grocery shopping yet, so if you're interested, you can contact the church or you can uh, let us know somehow through email or the phone or in person. But it's this Friday. We're going to be leaving here at 3 o'clock, caravanning there to Walker Basin where we will stay for two days. And so with that, I just wanted to share... Uh, because we just had our baptism, I want to just share a little bit about baptism and why we baptize here at Calvary Chapel to Hatchby. And uh, it starts with the commandment that Jesus gave us, of course, in Matthew chapter 28. At verse 18, when Jesus said to his disciples, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. He says, Go therefore and make disciples of the nations baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I command you, and lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. So, reason number one why we baptize is because Jesus commands us to, that we are to go into all the earth and make disciples. Uh, notice he doesn't say make converts. He says to make disciples or students or learners. And he says to baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So Jesus commands us to baptize. But then Jesus also sets a precedence for us. He gives us an example. As Jesus was somewhat unknown at the beginning of his ministry, 
And then he finally came from Galilee to John the Baptist there, who was baptizing people in the Jordan. And in Matthew chapter 3, we read at verse 13, says, Then Jesus arrived from Galilee at the Jordan, coming to John to be baptized by him. But John tried to prevent him, saying, I have need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? Verse 15 says, But Jesus answering said to him, Permit it at this time, for in this way it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. And so Jesus Christ himself came to be baptized by John. Interesting that John said, probably like anyone else would say, uh, wait a minute, Lord, uh, you have no need to be baptized. You are Lord God. You are holy. You are sinless. You are perfect. But you, please, baptize me. But notice what Jesus says here. He says, permit it at this time, for in this way it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. Very important here that Jesus is showing us these steps of obedience. When we are baptized uh, in water, it isn't a picture, it isn't us fulfilling all righteousness. It is a step in that process of righteousness. As Jesus here is showing us that it's by obedience that we can come to this righteousness. And remember, Jesus, who is and was perfect and sinless, had no need to be baptized. But remember what Isaiah the prophet says in Isaiah chapter 53 at verse 12 when he said that Jesus, the Messiah, was going to be numbered with the transgressors. And so Jesus being baptized there by John really is him identifying with sinful men. Because remember, Jesus would shed his blood there on the cross and God would pour out his wrath on Jesus, the wrath that you and I deserve. So Jesus is sinless and perfect, but he bore our sins. And so Jesus' baptism is a picture of obedience to the Father and also it's a picture of him identifying with us. And so then this is why we are then baptized because Jesus identified with us and now we are identifying ourselves with Jesus. Listen to what Colossians says. <clears throat> Colossians chapter 3, or chapter 2 at verse 12, says this, Having been buried with him in baptism, in which you were also raised up with him through faith in the working of God, who raised him from the dead. And so what does Colossians say here? Paul, he says, having been buried with him in baptism. You see, when we are being baptized and we go down underneath the water, it is a picture of us being buried with Jesus. Just as D Jesus was crucified, buried, uh, but then Jesus was also resurrected from the dead on the third day. And so we are identifying with Jesus and his death. And then as we identify with him in his death, we also then identify with him in the resurrection. And so really, this is what we are doing when we go down under the water. We are dying to our sins. We're dying to ourself. Uh, and when we come up, we are coming up brand new, just like Jesus. I love also in the book of um, Galatians, that Paul says this to the Galatian church regarding baptism. He says in Galatians chapter 3 at verse 24, he says, Therefore the law has become our tutor to lead us to Christ so that we may be justified by faith. But now that faith has come, we are no longer under a tutor. For you are all sons of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all of you who were baptized into Christ have clothed yourself with Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free man. There is neither male nor female. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. And if you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's descendants, heirs according to the promise. And what a beautiful picture we have there of being resurrected with Jesus and living for him now 
openly. And so that's what we do in baptism. We are publicly displaying our inward uh, relationship by faith in Jesus uh, that we have received him. We have had our sins forgiven and we are now born again. We are new now new in his spirit. He also says, Paul, in 1 Corinthians 12, at verse 12, Paul says this, For even as the body is one, and yet has many members, and all the members of the body, though they are many, are one body, so also is Christ. For by one Spirit we were all baptized into one body, whether Jew or Greek, whether slave or free, and we were all made to drink of one body. Spirit, What a beautiful thing that when we are baptized, we are baptized into the body of Christ and we are all one in his spirit. And so this is what uh, the seven people that I mentioned did this Sunday and many more on the previous baptisms. And uh, just what an exciting thing, guys, when we are new in Christ, when behold, uh, old things have passed away and behold, all things have become new in Christ. And what a difference Jesus makes as we talked about this last Sunday. Truly, Jesus changes everything. And so I pray that if you have never been baptized or you have never received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, that you would pray and then you would look for a place uh, to accept Jesus. You can do that in the comfort of your own home. Uh, You can enter into prayer Uh, with God at any time, and you could simply just ask him uh, to forgive you of your sins, uh, that you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God who was crucified, buried, and resurrected on the third day. You ask Jesus to forgive you of your sins. You invite him to come in to your heart, to open up your heart. You ask him to come and to to live, make an abode with you, uh, and he will come in. And then you thank him for that in Jesus' name. And so then you can, after you receive Jesus, you can go to any church, any place, and you could be baptized or you can uh, have a friend who's a Christian baptize you. Um, And so what a beautiful thing. And uh, pray that the rest of your week will be blessed. And um, we look forward to seeing you here shortly and soon. And uh, pray that God will continue to bless you and keep you. We love you. And we'll see you soon.